It's not hard for me to go back to November 8th, 2018, even though it's 50 years ago now. I remember it like it was yesterday. On that day, everything changed. A massive wildfire destroyed my hometown of Paradise, California in a single day. The fire jumped from canyon to canyon, incinerating 19,000 structures, displacing nearly 50,000 people, and ultimately taking 86 lives. Without any warning, the residents of Paradise and neighboring communities were engulfed in what one could only liken to hell. Back then, most folks were living in isolation at best, and at worst were afraid of their neighbors. We believed we had to fend for ourselves. It was the culture of the time. Yet, in this moment of absolute disaster, we were able to see beyond that false narrative. We were all in this together. We came off that ridge in grace, picking up neighbors and stray pets, hoping to save as many as we could. Homes and neighboring communities were opened up to us. The entire world looked upon the survivors with empathy and generosity. Donations poured in. The world rallied around paradise. This level of generosity and neighborly love became a beacon of hope and a foundational piece in rebuilding our town. The moment was ripe to burst forth with a new vision for what was possible. It was a turning point. Back then, communities all over the world were living in disaster. There was an opioid epidemic. Millions of people lacked clean water, nutritious food, or health care. Political divisiveness was absolutely toxic and hedged towards full-on violence at times. The dominant narrative of the media pushed stories of separation, suspicion, fear, and distrust. It was all too tempting to simply blame someone else. Everywhere you looked, the solution offered was more and more consumption as if we could consume indefinitely to distract ourselves from the chaos and uncertainty. Those were dark times. We all knew things were broken, but we were unable to make big changes. The campfire forced us to look into the ashes of the past and reflect. For many of us, we had been released from a future we did not choose. Did we really want to recreate our broken system? Instead, we spoke of our shared values and imagined the possibilities. We identified nature and community as being essential aspects of life in paradise. From there, we set forth about building a town that reflected those common values. We took bold steps. We'd lost so much already that we had nothing left to lose. We shook off the label of victims and took charge of our own recovery. Instead of outside workers, it was community members who lost their homes and jobs who were employed in the cleaning and rebuilding efforts. We prioritized housing for survivors so they could be a part of creating our new town. Natural building techniques used local materials and helped our homes resist fire. And it happened in what then was considered the old fashioned way. Neighbors coming together, barn raisins, our grandparents called them, we remembered how good it felt to grow and eat local food. Noble Orchards reopened soon after the fire and inspired us to support local farms. Orphan land was transitioned into community gardens where we could feed our families and talk with neighbors. We celebrated our healthier bodies, land, economy, and community. Ridge Bucks even came back into circulation. Folks took pride in spending Paradise's currency at newly opened businesses, farms, and utilities. We had a thriving local economy. Fewer people were commuting to Chico since there was plenty to do in Paradise. We needed to mend our relationship with our land. Working closely with Maidu tribe leaders, we created a network of wildlife trails that served not only as a food forest, but also a fire break. We used permaculture to support healthy ecosystems. Their wisdom taught us how to coexist with fire using controlled burning as a tool. The old energy company, PG&E, has long since gone bankrupt and shut down. It was through their neglect and focus on profits that faulty equipment sparked the campfire and many others throughout California. They had put off necessary repairs for decades and instead gave financial bonuses to their corporate executives. 
All the while, thousands of poor and uninsured folks struggled to get back on their feet. We knew we needed to be self-sufficient in our own energy. Our very lives depended on it. So we built our own microgrid, erecting wind turbines to harness the energy of high winds and installing solar farms like the ones still in use along the Skyway. We generated and distributed electricity locally. Community members were employed to build and manage our self-sufficient energy network. Everything about our energy system aligned with our values of nature and community. Our town became safer, more independent, and more harmonious with nature. Our actions were documented and compiled into a handbook for communities rebuilding from disaster. The Vision Center within the Paradise Gold Nugget Museum hosted students from around the world who came to learn about our journey. And we saw many towns follow in our footsteps. Curiously, the progress within Paradise felt more like returning to our town's roots. Our homes, food system, energy, and economy all drew from and replenished our local resources. We became self-sufficient as we shepherded the bounty of our land. When I look back to November 8th, 2018, I still feel our immense loss. But I also know it was a start of something incredible. Thank you.